found that we can uh, have inductive or recursive definitions over over such uh, such a relation and the the most obvious one is the, the depth of world so uh, the world that doesn't have any r successor is of depth zero and uh, the world that only has successors of depth zero uh, and at least one of them uh, has that one and and so on so i try to draw something um but uh, my pen doesn't work mm -hmm. hmm. weird it <laughs> it has worked before maybe maybe zoom uh interferes with it somehow it doesn't doesn't really matter i, I will have nice pictures after um so the main uh, thing here is that can cannot uh, skip ordinals. So if you uh, have a depth uh, that's greater than uh, I don't know omega, then you uh, must have a R successor that has that exactly omega. And uh, the corollary is that uh, that uh, range is also an ordinal, and we we call it depth of of the frame. So if we have a frame with three worlds and they are of depth uh, one, uh, zero, one, and two, then we uh, say that the depth of, of the whole um, uh, frame is, is three, of course. Um, and uh, we need to have uh, the definition of model equivalence. Uh, worlds are modally equivalent if the same model formulas are true on them. So if it is true on, on W, then it is true on V and uh, Vice versa. It uh, W and V doesn't don't have to be in the same in the same frame. They can be in different. Frames. They are isomorphic. Then of course they are model equivalent. But since every model formula sees only to a fixed finite depth, and it can be seen to be equal to number of nested model operators in the formula, uh, then uh, we see that if we pick two worlds at infinite but different depths, for example, omega plus one and omega plus two, uh, they will be modally equivalent because no, no formula can see uh, so, so deep. It only has a finite number of nested model operators, uh, but of course they are not isomorphic because, uh, well, uh, omega plus two has a successor that has a successor of depth, uh, depth omega, and uh, omega plus one does not have some. Um, or if you want to uh, formulate uh, it in terms of uh, frames, frames of that uh, omega plus two and omega plus three that contain those worlds are not isomorphic. Uh, of course, uh, we is here speak of the frames of that, but for every ordinal, there is a frame of that exactly alpha. It is just a von Neumann ordinal alpha with uh, inverse uh, containment as a, as a relation. Is easily seen to to satisfy the the requirements for for GL frame. Uh, okay, so finally, what are the universal frames? Uh, if we look at precisely omega plus one with, with reverse containment, uh, uh, then we see that for every GL frame and for every world within it, there is a unique world uh, uh, W bar. Uh, within that uh, that frame, uh, which is modally equivalent to W. So every world, everywhere, anywhere, uh, does have a unique uh, representant in in the universal frame. So uh, universal frame contains a representant of any type of world up to uh, anywhere up to model equivalence. Of course, it works only in clo closed fragment. As soon as you uh, start having uh, propositional variables, the thing complicates uh, very much. But uh, here I, I, I look only uh, at the closed fragment. Uh, moreover, W bar is the unique such world. Of course, it is the only one at its depth because each, each ordinal here is at different depth. Um, and the worlds of different finite depths aren't modally equivalent, of course. Uh, why here? Uh, we, have, uh, we have formulas characterizing the worlds of depth exactly n. So 
uh, the world is of depth zero if a box falls, falls on it, just as it has no successor. And the world is of uh, depth uh, n plus one if uh, it has, it is no deeper, it has no successor of depth n plus two, and it has, all, has at least one, this is diamond, uh, has at least one successor of that n. So it is inductive definition of formulas uh, which characterize the worlds of that exactly n. Uh, and then of course uh, w, the omega world is also characterized by just elimination. No such formula of, of those uh, must hold on it. So uh, the worlds of fi uh, different finite depths are not modally equivalent. The worlds of finite and infinite this is, this is only omega, uh, that uh, are not equivalent, so uh, this, this w uh, bar must be unique. But not, not only that, if we go to the meta level, we, we uh, look at the universal model on your universal frame itself, n bar, it is unique with such property. Why? Because it must have a world of every finite depth and it must have a world with an infinite depth, so it can represent those, those worlds. And uh, in each of those depths, it must have exactly one world, because uh, world uniqueness property. And uh, also, the only world at infinite depth must be a depth exactly omega, so it cannot be uh, lower because there are no lower uh, ordinals. Uh, infinite ordinals than, than omega, and it cannot be uh, greater than omega because of the depth lemma. If, if we have something greater than omega, then we must have a successor of depth exactly omega, so we would have two worlds of infinite depth, and it's impossible. Uh, and uh, by the same uh, argument, we get that R, the, the relation, is uniquely pinpointed, because every ordinal must uh, every ordinal that is not omega must uh, be connected to its predecessor uh, and uh, then by transitivity it must be connected to, to every uh, ordinal below. Okay, so uh, here, is, here are some pictures. Uh, this is some very complicated uh, GL frame. Uh, the worlds are col colored by depth, so uh, red, red worlds are of depth zero, these brown worlds of the, are of depth one, uh, green worlds are of depth 2 and uh, blue worlds are, are of depth uh, 3 and the uh, black worlds are of infinite depth. We see that here is some, some infinite chain between the, this, uh, this blue and this uh, black, black world. And uh, here uh, is the n bar, is the universal frame. So it has uh, one red 0, one black uh, ordinal 1, one green ordinal 2, one uh, blue ordinal 3, and one black ordinal omega. So the, the, the correspondence is obvious, I guess. Uh, and uh, of course, it's not a proof, but uh, it's almost a proof. Uh, here, here are some other models. Uh, we can have uh, much deeper for example, up to omega four or something uh, uncountable, whatever it doesn't doesn't really matter because the model model formulas cannot see the difference between all of those. It would just map all of those to to omega. Or we can have some some model which isn't even connected, so we can have two two worlds, but the, those are even isomorphic, so they're surely model equivalent, and each of them is uh, model equivalent to this zero. So it seems that universal uh, property holds. Okay, so uh, this is one half of my talk. The other half is for the interpretability logic. So uh, GL uh, nicely models probability in many reasonable, reasonable theories, but uh, and for example it is the probability logic of PA but also of uh, ZF or uh, of uh, von Neumann Bernays Gödel uh, theory of classes or, and so on. Uh, but uh, uh, Visser has uh, asked the question, what about comparing the uh, theories with respect to relative strength, not absolute strength, what they can prove and or cannot prove, but uh, what, what theories or what extensions of theories are stronger than the others? Um, 
it can be said uh, which extension of some basic theory can interpret another. So uh, over some basic theory T, uh, we can interpret box phi as T proves phi, and we can interpret uh, this uh, binary model operator uh, uh, phi uh, triangle uh, psi uh, as uh, T plus uh, phi interprets T plus psi. Um, so it is just a bit more complicated, but this this model oper uh, this binary model operator gives rise to to ternary relations, and the the models are and the frames are uh, much more complex. Uh, of course, uh, contrary to to GL, which is the probability logic of mostly any reasonable theory. Uh, IL is not a, an interpretability logic of, in itself, of various theories, but uh, uh, its extensions are. For example, if we extend it by the principle of permanence, we get something called ILP, which is the interpretability logic of basic theory von neumann bernays gödel And if we extend it by something called Montagna principle, then we get ILM, and it is the interpretability logic of PL. And those, those principles are not really compatible there uh, in, in some sense in different directions. Of course, there are many other uh, rows in this table, but those two are just representative. Um, so syntax is, as I said, only a bit more complicated. Instead of box phi, uh, I have this uh, binary model operator uh, and uh, everything else is derived even box itself. So box can be um, uh, written as, as a special case of, uh, of uh, triangle. So of course, it just says A is provable if uh, not A interprets false. So if uh, I add not A to a theory, then I can derive contradiction, of course. Uh, and uh, diamond A, it is, a is consistent, right? Not A is not provable. Uh, A is consistent means, uh, well, it means exactly that. Um, okay, we define model depth by, by induction, but it is uh, the, the usual, usual definition. The axioms are uh, not really relevant here, but uh, here they are for, for the completeness. Um, and uh, it's nice to know that GL is a sub-theory of IL. So uh, K and 4 are not on the, on the list, but they don't, don't have to be because K follows from a J3 and the 4 follows from uh, J4 and J5. Um, okay, if we uh, generalize GL frames, we get something called Weltman frames. Mm -hmm which are uh, GL frames with, with uh, a ternary relation or a family of binary relation, relations uh, as W for each, uh, for each uh, W uh, that is overall. Uh, it is a relation on the set of successors of W uh, extending R there. So if, if we have an R arrow, then we have also an uh, arrow of, of SW. Okay, and uh, of course, this is just a relation that says which formulas hold on which worlds, uh, and uh, those two are obvious. And uh, the interpretation of this triangle means that uh, F triangle G holds on W if for every V such that V is an R successor that validates the left-hand side, F, there is a U, uh, which is an SW successor or neighbor of V uh, that uh, validates the right-hand side, G. So, uh, of course, uh, Box and Diamond have only one of those quantifiers. Box has for every and Diamond has there is. And this uh, is a combination. This is a pi by two sentence for every, there is such that. And uh, the biggest surprise, uh, because uh, at least for me, it was a surprise. I, I just uh, tried to, to find the universal frame for, for IL. Uh, there is no such thing. Uh, there, there cannot be 
uh, a universal frame for, for IO. Uh, assume the contrary, that there is a flame, frame such that for every frame and for every world within that frame, there is a unique world within this first frame such that uh, those are modally equivalent. So for every closed IL formula, uh, it holds on v, uh, W if and only if it holds on uh, the representant in the, the universal frame. And uh, how we will get a contradiction, we will car carefully construct an M, so this, this one. Um, we will uh, carefully construct such M and, and the, the world within it, uh, such that it, it cannot have a representant, we will see. see how. Uh, first, we have to generalize characteristic formulas. Um, so, um, this is very, very complicated notation, but it, it just says that uh, every formula has an equivalent formula in some normal form. Uh, which is just uh, we uh, we uh, start from some set of formulas, then we uh, construct all the perfect disjunctive normal forms, disjunctions of uh, formulas from from that set, and uh, and negations of formulas from out of that set, right? Um, and then uh, of course these are just Boolean uh, things at level zero. Then we uh, add gradually the the model model operator. So we uh, uh, get d five from d four. We we take d four and we take all the all the triangles between between formulas in d four and we get d five and we close again close with with respect to 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 boolean connection. Then every formula in a closed fragment uh, has an equivalent formula uh, in D with the index of uh, depth of model depth of, of that formula. Uh, this empty set is just because here here usually are the propositional variables, but we uh, don't need propositional variables, so this is this is empty. Okay, uh, the consequence of finitely many types of formulas. Are there are only finitely many types of worlds for any given depth? Why? Because of course, uh, every any two worlds of depth n which aren't modally equivalent must disagree on some formula of model depth less than n, and there are only finitely many of them because all of those sets by induction we can easily see that all of those sets are are finite, uh, very large but but finite. Uh, so they, they, there cannot be more than combinations. Uh, to, to, the, uh, to the power of the number of formulas, different types of worlds, because for every formula, it might, the world just, uh, can just say uh, it holds or it doesn't hold. There are finitely many, many possibilities. Okay? And uh, we construct our, our model, but uh, please don't look at this. This is <laughs> very, very complicated and, uh, and formal. Uh, here, here is the picture. So. We will refer to, to the picture. Uh, black arrows are R relations, and these uh, um, dashed arrows are color coded with respect to the world within, uh, with respect to which world they are. So S with index H is green because H is green. S uh, C and S D are red because C and D are red, and S G is blue because G is blue. Uh, the other worlds are not really important. They are just here to, to, to enable those constructions, so they are black. Um, okay, so this is this is Weltman model in the sense that uh, all of those, well, here, here, uh, here is very many uh, edges, much more than on the, on the picture, but many of those edges are forced by conditions on R and S, SW. So, uh, the slide, the picture gives only the non-mandatory errors. So the, the ones that are exactly the, the frames of uh, the degrees of freedom, right? Um, so this is, this is the, the frame and this is the supposed to be a universal frame which, which cannot exist. Why? Because uh, we, we will see it on the, on the next slide, but just uh, the, the, the idea of, of the argument, uh, E and F, are modally equivalent. So they, they must map on the same world uh, in the universal model. 
e, e bar must be equal to f bar. But uh, then that world must have a, a green arrow, h bar arrow, right? Uh, to some world which is somehow both d and g uh, at the same time. It, it, it cannot be. It, uh, th th those worlds uh, just uh, serve to, to, to have uh, d, and d and g be uh, not modally equivalent. So it, it just uh, cannot happen. Why? As a, now, now there is a, a, a bit of uh, formalization, but uh, just the slightly more formal idea. Uh, for every uh, world, we have a formula which characterizes it, com it completely. In GL, this is this was only its depth uh, up to up to omega. But uh, here we must must be more careful. But still, it it is a finite formula. It is. Uh, it says you are a world which is modally equivalent to W. If you are of the same depth of, of W, so we, we use those formulas from GL, and all the formulas within some set, which just picks all the finitely many types of formulas uh, of modal depth, uh, which is the same as the depth of, of W, uh, which hold on, on, uh, on W R in the conjunction, and of those that do not hold on W, the, the negations are. So, of course, this is just a, a finite uh, formula and uh, it, it uh, precisely picks out just the, the world we need. Uh, of course, it, it works for, for our worlds. Uh, there are eight of them, A to, to H, uh, but uh, the whole characteristic formulas theory can be applied to any world in any frame, provided that it is of finite depth. So it, it doesn't doesn't work after the depth omega, of course, uh, because there are infinitely many such such formulas after after the depth. But uh, we will not need this here because, of course, this is of depth uh, one zero one two three four. Um, so the, the whole model is of depth five. Uh, it's easy to see that D and G aren't modally equivalent because D validates this formula, uh, the world A, because we, we see the D arrow from, from A to B, and um, G doesn't validate that formula because uh, there, there is no SG arrow from, from A to B. Okay. So they, they aren't modally equivalent. But E and F are model equivalent. Why? Because they, they have the same R successor and, and the same S relation. So we have just E and F are perfectly symmetric. The, the R successors are C, B, and A, and the S relations are just those that, that must, must be in order for, for the definition to, 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 to go through. So nothing, nothing special there. They're, they're indistinguishable. Of course, they are, they are by, by SH, they are connected to different worlds, but they cannot see it. We can only see it if we, if we start looking at, at them from, from H. Right. Uh, so, they are modally equivalent. First consequence is the world uniqueness. So, uh, E bar and F bar are the same, same world we know by T. And second consequence, uh, those formulas characterizing them are, in fact, equivalent. So there is only one representant of them uh, in the D3 of, of empty set, because that is, is three, uh, we denoted by psi. Psi uh, holds, of course, on E and F, but doesn't hold on any other world, because the only ones that can, can be candidates are of the same depth, D and G, but uh, those are not, those are eliminated by, by such arrows as this, this red arrow from A to B or this blue arrow from, from B to C. So at the world H, we have the depth, we have uh, the formula that says it, it is of depth four, and we have such a triangle formula psi, uh, triangle uh, D or G. So uh, any, neighbor of H neighbor of E or F uh, must have, must be either D or G. So of course it is, 
It is true, right? But we don't have psi triangle D because, of course, there is a, an F which doesn't have D as a, as a neighbor. Uh, and we don't have psi triangle G because, of course, we have E which doesn't have G as a neighbor. Of course, uh, then such uh, h-bar cannot exist in the universal frame because uh, there is only one t, right? So um, h-bar must not also validate this formula because it is uh, modally equivalent to h. Uh, so there is an r successor which validates psi, but only such one can, can be t. By, by world uniqueness. It, it is a characteristic formula of, of E and F also. Uh, so if U is a neighbor of T, then it is not D. It, it doesn't validate characteristic formula of D. Completely analogously, uh, by switching the, the, the sides, uh, it also is not G. But of course, H must, uh, H bar must uh, validate this formula. And it is impossible because that means that for every R successor of H bar, and we have seen above that T is one of them, so particularly for T, there exists its neighbor, uh, U, that's validating the disjunction. But it, it cannot be because it cannot validate uh, either, either of the disjunctions. Okay, so, uh, and it is, it concludes the proof. And uh, just uh, what to do, what to do further? Of course, the key problem is the world uniqueness. So there is only one, there can be only one representant of every, every world, world type. Can we weaken that condition and still obtain something useful? Probably yes, but not much. Um, I hope I will have some, <laughs> some results soon. Uh, second, there are various extensions of IL. Some of those are coinciding with GL in their closed fragment, for example, ILF. Uh, so they do have universal frame. Of course, now, now we, can, we can ask ourselves what principles do have universal frame in closed fragment and which ones don't. Where, where is the boundary between them? Uh, also, there are other semantics for interpretability logic, for most notably is uh, the generalized Weltman semantics. So uh, it, uh, instead of uh, this S, SW being between worlds, it is between worlds and sets of worlds. So it is, it is generalized in that sense. So maybe there is a universal generalized Weltman frame. I don't know. Uh, and uh, just a technical problem if you, I try to, uh, with the computer verify those results. Characteristic formulas are horribly long. They are iterated exponentials long. And for step five, they are already many, many thousands of uh, characters long. Um, are there polynomial characteristic formulas? Probably yes, but I haven't really uh, pinpointed uh, every, every detail. Uh, okay, so that's it. I hope I haven't uh, spent too much time. Are there any questions? Thank you, Vedran. Uh, actually, we managed to record your talk, so it was recorded all the time. Very all nice. The, all the Thank time. you. Yes. Okay, so we have time for, uh, for a question or two. Uh, I see somebody raised the hand, but I don't know whether it's a question, Peter. Uh, probably not. Probably it was just... Uh, uh, Shika has a question, right? Ah, oh, yes, Shika, please. Sorry. Well, uh, it's, it's not really uh, completely connected with, with your lecture, which, uh, which I'm fond of, and thank you for it, but uh, it's just a more general question. Uh, we know that uh, incompleteness is uh, provable for first-order infinite series. Yes. Generally. So, what is important is that it's uh, infinite, but I will uh, concentrate on the other uh, point and that, that it must be uh, formulated in first order language. Mm, yes. 
Yeah. So uh, it is uh, in some sense uh, we think that we go to the that we have to go to to uh, second or higher order languages to to lose in completeness or something like that. But then I was I remember it was a long time ago maybe twenty years ago so I recalled through the through the fog when I realized that. Uh, if you introduce uh, branching quantifiers oh. in the first order language, you know, this mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. or, or, or uh, Kisler, whatever you like to mm -hmm. call them. So for every X, there is Y, so that for every U, there is V, but you want that V does depend only on U, but not yes, on. Yes, yes, I, I know, uh, yes. Then, then it's not possible to prove incompleteness for such languages. I think that he's Hintika... very surprising. I, I uh... <laughs> yeah. Hintika was he, he, he tried to make a, 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 a big point of this, but I, I don't think that I, I think it is it is very important uh, uh, point of him, but it, it doesn't took a lot of interest, I would say, in logical circles, at least not in mathematical logic. Well, at least to me, it is surprising because I, I up I to now, it's surprising. Well, but my my question is, uh, how how does it reflect? Is is there is there any possibility? How how? Let me put it this way: what what are the important parts that in uh, GL or other probability logics? is played by the fact that the theories we are dealing with are first order theories. And hmm. what is the difference if we add this branching quantifier? So go, in a sense, it's also first order theory, I would say, it's not second order. Yes, yes. So could we see using this probability logics and this model theory, why is uh, important that you have this sequentiality and that it's not allowed to have this branching well I, intuition of course I, I i know that yes yes of course first first let me say that that uh, why 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 i consider this this result very very surprising because i i just said uh, i just thought that that first order is just a a, a midpoint which is uh, which has two two properties that are important first that is it is expressive enough Mm -hmm. And the second is that it is uh, recursively axiomatizable. Mm -hmm. So if uh, we look at these uh, dependent quantifiers, of course, it is still expressive enough and it is still recursively axiomatizable. More so expressive. What? Yeah, it's more expressive. Well, of course, yes. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, then, yeah. then <laughs> either it has a non-recursive yeah, axiomatization, yeah. which is very weird, or, or there is there is some some third property, be, be, which is important. Besides, uh, yeah. Recursive axiomatization and expressivity, uh, which which really makes Gödel's theorem pass. But uh, when when I look at the axiom, of course, ax axioms of, of GL, the only one I, I can I can point to, of course, is is Lebesgue's formula yeah, because. K and then four are simply <laughs> obvious things. Uh, so, so probably, probably lab is something that that, that really um, draws on on some particular um, interplay between 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 quantifiers. But I I, I really can can't. Uh... Yeah, it's because you know first order. Formulas are linear in a sense. You you cannot yes yes but them. Well, I don't know how to implement lab lab theorem or yeah. Well, well, my point is if you if you start to think about that, and I would like that you do that, then uh, you you can find this literature looking at Hintika's papers about that. I would like to to know if if you find any useful applications of probability logics to, to this problem. I will, I will surely problem. try. Yeah. Okay, thank you.